Hello, I'm Dr. Terry Simpson. I do weight loss surgery about half of the time, and half the time I study diets and lifestyle and cook. Today's topic is the recent article from the Archives of Internal Medicine, which has been headlined around the world as Red Meat Consumption Leads to Increase in Mortality or Death, or Early Death. And those deaths are associated with heart disease and cancer, which is, by the way, most of the deaths that occur. When I first saw the headlines of this, I thought, oh, here we go again. And, of course, it was followed up by a, a, a nice little opinion by Dean Ornish, who, of course, agrees with all this. There are several problems with this study, and I want to point them out. The first problem is that this is a statistical study looking at a cohort over time past. This is not a study where you take people and say, we're going to look at what you eat, record what you eat as you go forward and follow you for all of these years. This is a study where we're looking backward. That's the first problem. If you want to have an idea of how cohort studies work, think about in 1991, women were encouraged to go on hormone replacement therapy because a cohort study showed that women on, co on hormone replacement therapy had fewer heart attacks. So for years, we as physicians were talking about, wow, there's some protective effect of women with estrogen. They have less heart attacks. Of course, as time went on, we re realized that our premise that women have less heart attacks was incorrect. They actually have the same amount as men. And number two, we also discovered that hormone replacement therapy wasn't bad. Eleven years later, we were telling people in 2002, get off hormones. The other question has to do with this study has to do with how they recorded the data of what people ate. What they used was something called a food frequency questionnaire, something that I have used in my practice in studying what patients tell me. So anecdotally, I can tell you this. What patients recall they eat and what they actually eat are two different things. This has actually been studied by other people looking at the food frequency questionnaire and actually looking at the nurse's health study, which was one of the two groups of populations that this Harvard-based group used. Basically, it's inaccurate to the point to where the food frequency questionnaire would be rendered useless and not wouldn't be used in a modern study. Like I said, that correlates with what most weight loss surgeons know when they ask patients what they eat. It's not necessarily that people lie. I'm sure there are some that do, but it really is a more of what you anticipate you eat. Let me give you an example. 20% of the nurses in the study reported eating less than 1,200 calories a day. It's very difficult to you do and very difficult for most of us to believe that 20% of any population would eat less than 1,200 calories a day. And 20% report eating more than 2,000 calories a day may be a little more believable. I can also tell you that what patients report to me who track their calories and what we physiologically measure as what they have eaten are too far off as to be, again, statistically unreliable. The bottom line is what people report they eat and the conclusions you can draw from them are inaccurate. And that was the problem with this study. The final has to do with the science of red meat. When you say that red meat is bad for you, and you make a statistical correlation that, well, if you eat, if you change one of the things like eating more nuts or berries or fish, you'll have less death based on these statistics, which is also a bunk. Let's talk about what red meat is. There are various types of red meat. They are not all the same. The levels in the red meat of omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids vary widely, even in cattle. In cattle, we know that if you eat cattle that are grain-fed, you will have different than the cattle that are grass-fed. Omega-3 fatty acids are half of what they are in grain-fed, which is most of the beef sold, versus cattle that are raised on a ranch and fed on grass. It's twice as much. The red meat varies tremendously. So the bottom line is the study is worthless. It has a lot of authors on it. They did a lot of study. But the problem is, is that the gar there's garbage in, garbage out. The statistics in it are poor. The, what the premise they rely on is poor. The science behind what they have is poor. We don't know a lot about this. Like all population studies, the more we study it, the less we find out that we know about what we actually think we know. What does this mean for you and red meat? Several things. Number one, don't believe everything you read. Number two, we're learning more about diet every day. My suggestion always is, eat less, exercise more. If you're going to be eating red meat, which is fine, consider grass-fed as opposed to grain-fed. Don't worry about this study. It's about as worthless as the cyberspace it was printed on. For your doctor's orders, 
I'm Dr. Terry Simpson. Good day.